Ernie Hudson, good morning, sir. Hey, good morning. It is an honor and a privilege to have you on the show today. Thanks for calling in. Well, thank you so much, man. It's uh, great to talk to you. And now going from the man who said that if there's a steady paycheck in it, he'll believe anything you say, to now being the yam man on uh, on Grace and Frankie Season 2 out today on Netflix. Yes. And I got to be honest, when my wife got me into this show on Netflix, you know, she watched a couple episodes, said, hey, I think you like it. And I looked at it and was like, ah, too... You know, women in their later years. I don't know, man. I ate my words. This show is hilarious. Well, you know what? And I got to tell you, the first season, I think, you know, we took a little time to sort of find what exactly it was. But this second season, uh, I saw the first couple episodes, is really, really good and and really amazing. Um, It goes from laughter to tears. I mean, it's really a good show. And I don't say that about a lot of the stuff that I do, but this is really good. Well, I mean, the cast is insane. You know, we have you yourself. We've got Lily Tomlin, Jane Fonda, Martin Sheen, Sam Waterston, and uh, Baron Vaughn. I mean, uh, you know, and the list goes on and on and on. I mean, when you go to work, do you have anything but fun when you're on that set? Yeah, you know, I mean, well, I try to always, but sometimes, um, you know, the situation makes it difficult. But in this particular case, I just love watching um, how these guys sort of do what they do and um i love playing with them so it's kind of a great situation for me because it does feel like play and um and so i'm just having fun and um yeah so it's great to be there and it's just great to watch them do what they do and now later this summer too ghostbusters 3 that's coming out and you know all the online mags are saying you have a quote a pivotal cameo i'm not looking for any spoilers but when the trailer came out you know obviously the trolls climb out from under their bridges and they get behind their keyboards on the internet (laughs) i'm excited for it man i mean it looks fun the visual effects in your opinion does this movie do the other two justice? Yeah, I think so. I, I think it's, um, first of all, the script was amazing, the special effects, you know, off the chart. And I met the uh, the ladies for the first time when I went to the set. Um, really funny. And but what really impressed me was they have their own sort of chemistry. Uh, we had ours, and theirs is uniquely theirs, and I think that's what's going to come through in the movie and make it really worth watching. Uh, they're not trying to redo us. Um, and that's, uh, that's very, very cool. And, um, I think, I think it's been a lot of criticism because I think a lot of people don't like the idea, but once the movie's out there where they can actually see it, I think, um, a lot of that's going to go away. Are you a little jealous you guys didn't have access to all these special effects back in the day? Well, you know, what we did holds up. So we had the best of what we had at the time. And, um, you know, my grandkids still love watching it. So, uh, so it's good. No, it's, uh. It's right where it should be. It's it's uh, all very, very good. And now I see, too, on your Twitter uh, that you're actually going to be in my old stomping grounds. You're going to be up in Poughkeepsie, New York, for the uh, the Hudson Valley Comic Con this weekend. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, I mean, you know, that's going to be fun. I'm, I always enjoy these things. And uh, so I've never been to Poughkeepsie, but uh, I will this weekend. Well, I'll say this. you got to go to the Palace Diner. That is a must. The Palace Diner. Okay, you got it. I mean, when you're at these Comic Con events and in these fan events, I'm sure you have people who are just your diehard fans who might know more about your character than you can ever remember. Have you had just an instance that caught you completely off guard? Um, well, I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure. I, nothing quite comes to mind. But I, I'm always impressed by, you know, the tattoos and um, you know the 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 amount that people put into you know making the backpacks and their cars and all the different kinds of cars that cost a fortune, but they made those sacrifices to. Uh, to do that, or you know, um, everything I hear about the movie uh, or what's going on with the franchise comes from fans because I hear nothing from the studios, and usually they're they're right. So it's just amazing to me that the fans are so into it and on it, and they make their these little films. Um, uh, there's hundreds of Ghostbuster movies that the fans have put together, and. and um, and a lot of them are pretty extraordinary. So uh, it, it's all kind of um, uh, amazing to me. What was it like seeing your first Ernie Hudson slash Winston Zedmore tattoo? Uh, well, I, I've seen a few where they had the four guys and they had, um, you know, something from the all every variation of the movie, the Marshmallow Man, Vigo, I mean, all that stuff. But uh, I went to buy a car and um, uh, the salesman said there's a, a guy who has a tattoo of you and it was a mechanic who came in and my face was on the entire 
um, his um, cap. I mean, it was uh, it was huge. It was like <laughs> the bottom part of his leg. And uh, and it was very um, uh, I, I don't know I I didn't quite know how to what to say about it. It was very impressive. Was it a good tattoo? Like was it a fair representation of you? Because some of those face tattoos can look just god awful. You see those galleries on the internet of like fake yeah. attempts. Yeah, no, this was good. This was actually from a, a photo that that um, that we took. So apparently they took the photo and uh, and it looked how oh, amazing at the artwork you can do on on the body. Um, you know, I mean, it's so detailed. Uh, it was really impressive. Um, so it looked good. It clearly was me. And he had planned to get the other um, three guys, but I was the first because that was his favorite Ghostbuster, and, and that was kind of cool. So I mean, what, as big as mine was, I don't know what, where he's going to put Danny Aykroyd, but... <laughs> um, <laughs> So, but uh, but it was it was it was uh, all that stuff is very humbling and uh, and I you know I, I appreciate the people who love the movie and that's the cool thing about you in my opinion you seem like a very grounded guy very down to earth guy and and one thing that I think speaks volumes about your character I just saw the other day TMZ just jammed a camera in your face at the airport about oh, yeah. uh, Larry Wilmore at the correspondence dinner and you had you had just such a great response. It was level-headed, even-keeled. You know, they didn't get you saying anything inflammatory. I mean, how annoying are those guys? Maybe not necessarily TMZ, but just the paparazzi in general kind of doing the gotcha journalism. Yeah, you know, they come out of nowhere. I mean, I was literally walking out of the airport, and all of a sudden this guy is, like, right there. I didn't know who he was. He didn't say, hi, I'm from TMZ, or I'm, you know, it's just a guy with a camera. And I thought it was a fan who wanted to come and say hi. And so he started talking. And uh, yeah, I didn't watch the news, so I didn't know anything about this. And so then I realized there was another guy who was with him who had a bigger camera. And then I thought, oh, it's, um, you know, but by the time you figure all that out, you know, if you aren't careful, you've said something that you'll regret. Because, you know, like I said, they don't come and introduce themselves. And uh, uh, and it's happened to me several times when Harold Ramis passed. Uh, I heard about it. From one of those guys, I got off the plane, and a guy was, oh, what do you think about it? And I, I didn't even know that he had passed, and so I'm trying to process that all the while the camera's rolling. Yeah. Um, and so it, it's it's a little um, it, it's a little strange to me why, but it, it seems to be the way, yeah, I don't know, the way things are going, I guess. But um, So I don't remember. I never saw that TMZ thing. Um, I don't remember what I said, but yeah, you know, and sometimes if if you say the wrong thing, it just gets really taken out of proportion. Yeah, it seems like the respect for personal space uh, is non-existent anymore, especially if you have a celebrity status. Yeah, I guess, and of course, you know, who uh, gives you a badge which says you have celebrity status? Now, I mean, when does that happen? Does I mean, I'm, I mean, they run up to me sometimes. I'm coming out of a supermarket, and I kind of go, really? I mean. I think there's got to be other guys who are more interesting or, you know, why? <laughs> really? Do you really want to? I don't get that. I don't uh, I don't see myself in that place where it, it deserves that kind of attention. Well, I personally would like to know what type of kale Ernie Hudson buys. I mean, that's that's something that's always on my mind. <laughs> yeah, it's a fascinating time. And thankfully, I mean, on my end of things here, being a mediocre radio DJ in Tucson, Arizona, I'll never have to worry about that. So I can sit back, breathe easy, and enjoy season two of Grace and Frankie. It's out on Netflix now. Looking forward to season three and looking forward to seeing you this summer in Ghostbusters 3. Ernie Hudson, thank you so much for the time today, sir. Thank you. Great talking to you, and best of luck to you and everything you're doing. Thank you. Have a great day.